Hello and welcome to another video here on my channel. My name is Laszlo and today I'm going to talk about how you can uh, do machine to machine authorization with the OAuth 2.0 client credentials flow. Uh, we're going to do also a demo with AWS Cognito and API Gateway and we're going to implement this uh, client credentials flow with these tools. But before the demo, let's just see quickly what is uh, uh, the client credentials flow uh, and where we can use this. So basically, you can use this for machine-to-machine um, uh, -machine, uh, authorization. It usually uses a client ID and a client secret uh, to get back an access token, which you can use to um, then uh, make requests to the protected resource. And this flow is best suited for machine-to-machine -machine, um, communications, like, for example, when services talk to each other, uh, or you have CLI tools that have to interact with uh, third-party services and so on. So in this case, uh, you are not going to have user credentials, like a username and a password. You're going to have a client ID and a client secret, and you will get back a token for that. And let's see quickly how uh, the flow works. So basically, you have these services, the, the client, which is actually a server. Then you have uh, Cognito user pools, which here will be the authorization server or endpoint. And you have the protected API that you want uh, to uh, use then. So first, a request is sent with the client ID and the client secret to the Cognito user pools authorization endpoint where uh, the, this client ID and client secret are, is validated. And then a token is returned to the client. And this token then can be used to access the API. So this is, uh, in short, this flow. Let's see it actually in action right now. So here I am in the AWS console. First thing, uh, we're going to create a Cognito user pool just very quickly. Um, just a moment, so a little bit of trouble here. Oh, come here. Okay, so let's create a user pool. Um, it's going to be username, but we're not going to actually use that. Here, I'm going to leave everything defaults, no MFA, click on next. Then here, everything will be on default. Uh, here, send email with Cognito. And now let's call this shop user pool. Uh, I want to use the Cognito hosted UI. This is important later. I have to have a domain, and this is really going to be part of the, uh, that authorization endpoint that I've talked about. So let's call this my cool shop, for example. Okay. Here I want to have a public client and I have to set uh, up this client. So initial app client. This will be M2M -M client, for example. Uh, and we need to generate a client secret. So click here on generate client secret. Uh, callback URL. This doesn't matter now. Let's add example com. Here at Advanced App Client Settings, we're going to have to uh, enable here the client credentials flow. But unfortunately, here you cannot do it. Uh, first, you have to create the user pool and come back and then change it. Uh, it says here, right, uh, right here, this thing. So let's first uh, create the app client and pool, and then we're going to uh, Create that as well. So click on next. Okay, create user pool. So we have our user pool. Now let's open it. And here uh, we have to go to the app integration tab. And on the app integration tab, we have this Cognito domain. Uh, we have to create a resource server. And uh, let's call this shop resource server. And a resource server identifier, let's call this shop. And we can add some custom scopes. And let's call this, uh, create the first scope for reads. So read for get 
requests. And let's add another one. This will be write for post requests. And let's create this resource server. So uh, a resource server is a remote server that will authorize access based on the OAuth 2 scopes that you have in the access token. Um, now let's go to our app client, which is here at the bottom. Let's go here. And here for the hosted UI, uh, let's go to the hosted UI. And here we have this, uh, these settings that we need to change. So here, instead of authorization code grant, let's remove that and add client credentials. And we also have to enable the custom scopes that we have created. So shop read and shop write. These are coming from the, that resource server that we have just created. Okay, let's click on save changes. And basically that's it on the, on the um, uh, Cognito side. Uh, let me just go back to the user pool. We're going to need this URL later, but we're going to come back here for that. Now let's go to API Gateway. So I'm opening API Gateway and I'm going to create now an API. So let's build the REST API. And this is going to be a new API. Let's call it shop. As you are going to see, I'm going to use the new API Gateway uh, interface, which was just released uh, the last uh, weeks. So first, let's create a resource. This is going to be shop. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have to get used to this uh, new interface as well. So here it is, shop. Uh, let's. Um, create a um, new method and here it is uh, it's going to be a mock okay and the method it will be get create method in this case just for the example I'm, I'm creating it as a mock method but you can uh, of course um, um, create a, a, a complete integration with this if you want to so for the integration response, I'm going to add here a response and let's have here status successful read. Let's click on save. And now let's also create another method here, which will be a post method. And this one also is going to be a mock integration for now. It. Uh, go to the integration response and here click on edit. Just uh, add here status success or write. Okay, save. And this is it for now. Let's deploy this API to a new stage. I'm going to call it prod deploy. Okay. And now I have this invoke URL here. Let's copy it. And now I'm going to bring in Postman. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it or not, but this is a tool that you can use uh, to make requests to APIs. So here is Postman. Let's uh, open here a new tab paste in this endpoint and add shop at the end. And this is going to be a get. Let's send the request now. So the response is successful read. If I do a post, then successful write. So right now, as you can see, my API is not protected. I have to protect it. So let's go back and let's um, uh, create an authorizer uh, for a cognito. Let's click, click on create authorizer and this will be shop authorizer. It's going to be a cognito authorizer. I have to select the user pool. This is the shop user pool that I've created. And the token source will be the authorization header. Okay, create the authorizer. And now I will have to go back to my resources. Let's go to get. And here in the method request, let's change this 
and actually <laughs> here it is in the new EU, uh, UI. So method request uh, settings here authorization let's use uh, shop authorizer and I have to add the scope shop read add the scope and save it. So I've done this for the get and now let's do it for the post as well. Method request, uh, the authorizer here, shop authorizer, and this in this case uh, uh, the scope will be shop right. Okay, save it. And now I have to deploy the API. Let's deploy it to the prod. Okay. Now let's go back to Postman and let's send again a post request. And it still says successful, right? It takes a little bit of time, but it starts to get, uh, give me after a few uh, minutes an unauthorized response. So message unauthorized and it's a 401. And if I'm going to repeat these uh, requests after a while, all I get is unauthorized because I'm not sending it any token at all. It expects from me an authorization token. But how do I get that in case of a machine-to-machine of a -machine interaction? So let's see that. Here in the authorization uh, tab in Postman, you can uh, select here OAuth2. And you have to specify here a few things. We're going to use client credentials. You could have uh, different ways, but let's use client credentials. And um, yeah, here it's uh, using, I think, some old things that I have uh, tested before uh, with. Let's go back to the um, Cognito user pool and grab the um, URL of the Cognito uh, domain. Let's paste in. And here we have to add at the end OAuth2 token. So it's important that you add this to the end. And then you have uh, to also add the client ID. For that, you go to the Cognito user pool. Uh, on the app integration tab, you have your app client down here. Click on it and you have the client ID here. And you can copy it, go back to Cognito. And then also here, show client secret, copy this client secret and paste it in here. And you have to put also the scope shop right in this case, because I'm sending a post request. Okay, and now click on get new access token. And it has actually retrieved a token. Here it is. I'm going to copy it, uh, copy the token. Uh, you don't need to copy it. I'm just copying it to show you something. Okay, but you can just click on use token. Basically, it will fill out here the token. And when you send the request, it will be successful right because it's sending the token uh, in the authorization header. So successful right. If I go back and just alter this token in any way, add uh, some letters here and send it again, you see unauthorized, the token is not valid. So Let's do that. Uh, let's get the token also for the get. So it's, I switch to the get method. But in this case, I have to change here the shop uh, to read the, the scope. Get new access token, proceed, use token, and then send the request. And it's a successful read, you see. Okay, now. Uh, just one more thing. I want to show you what's in that uh, uh, token, access token. So I go to JWTIO. This is a, a site where you can decode uh, the token. So let's paste here, here our token. And you see it decodes it, the access token. Uh, each token has uh, three different parts, the header, the payload, and the signature. And in the payload, you can see that this is a pack, uh, an access token with the scope shop right, uh, the auth authorization time, the endpoint, 
uh, also expiration, things like that, and also the client ID. So these are some information that you can get from the, the, that token. So basically, this is how um, uh, the client credentials flow work. Uh, of course, when you implement this in a service, you're not going to use Postman. So what do you do then? So it's very simple. You First, you have to send a request to the authorization uh, endpoint, to this one, uh, where you need to send uh, the client ID and uh, the client secret. You are going to find uh, in the documentations how you need to uh, send those. Uh, it's not complicated. Then you will get a response with the token, and you send the second request with that token to the API to get access to that API. So this is it for today. I hope um, I hope it, you like this video and it helps you. Um, if you di uh, did like it, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you soon with another video here on the channel.